The name of the game during the heyday of the Wild West was conflict. Whether it was between the United States and foreign powers, such as Spain or Mexico, settlers and their long list of enemies, or within the settlers' communities themselves, everywhere you looked, someone was at odds with someone else. Not only that, but with an increase in vigilantism and lawlessness came an increase in needing protection. And who better to fulfill these quests of protection, investigation, and security than the Pinkerton National Detective Agency, one of the most renowned leagues of private investigators during the peak of Old West history. As a result, the varying weapons and other protection systems utilized by Pinkertons ballooned in the mid-19th century, heightened by the increased usage of their services. This then coincided with the mass production of firearms, and you're left with a broad list of guns and artillery made available to the original bounty hunters, private eyes, and security officers of the frontier. To garner a better understanding of what these types of guns were and how they were used, we're breaking down the major groups of arms and protection systems of these legendary lawmen. Thus, here are five specific weapons used by Pinkerton detectives in the Wild West. Our first weapon, the Tranter Revolver, invented by William Tranter around 1856, was a notable double-action cap and ball revolver. Initially equipped with a dual-trigger mechanism, one for cylinder rotation and cocking, another for firing, it later evolved into a single-trigger design similar to the contemporary Beaumont Adams revolver. This solid-frame firearm saw three major models, with notable changes in the attachment of the ramrod. On the double trigger models, a lower trigger was used to cock the gun, and the hammer lacked a spur, requiring the lower trigger to be pressed before firing in single action mode. Pulling both triggers simultaneously allowed for rapid firing, making it a double action weapon. During the American Civil War, the Confederate States of America sought foreign firearms due to limited access to northern factories and a lack of local small arms production. Tranter had a contract with Hyde and Goodrich in New Orleans to distribute his revolvers, which continued under successors during the war. The Confederate military favored Tranter revolvers for their reliability and functionality, available in various calibers. Once the Civil War came to a conclusion Production of Tranter percussion revolvers continued, as some believed them to be safer and more cost-effective than cartridge-based designs. Tranter even obtained a patent for rimfire cartridges in England in 1863, later producing centerfire cartridge revolvers. The Tranter gun and pistol factory expanded production in 1867, receiving a British Army contract in 1878 for 450 caliber centerfire cartridge revolvers during the Zulu War, marking the last official military use of Tranter revolvers. Notably, Alan Pinkerton, founder of the Pinkerton Detective Agency, used Tranter revolvers. This influenced other Pinkerton operatives, becoming a staple in early frontier investigations conducted by the agency. While not American nor a Pinkerton, legendary Australian bushranger Ben Hall infamously carried a tranter during the heyday of his notorious Gardner Hall gang. Hall is the Aussie version of Jesse James, his gang the Aussie version of the James Younger gang, and the bushranger folklore in general is the Aussie version of Old West Outlawry on the American frontier. Lucky for the Bushrangers, the Pinkertons hadn't quite made their way across the Pacific. Otherwise, it might have become the Clash of the Tranters. The Smith & Wesson Model 1, a groundbreaking firearm manufactured between 1857 and 1882, 
holds a significant place in the history of firearms, as used by Pinkerton detectives on the western frontier. This revolver marked a pivotal departure from traditional firearms, as it was the first commercially successful handgun to utilize rimfire cartridges instead of loose powder, musket balls, and percussion caps. Its innovation lay in its simplicity, as it was a single action, tip-up revolver designed to hold seven 22 short black powder cartridges. In the mid-1850s, as Samuel Colt's patent on the revolver was approaching its expiration, two visionaries, Horace Smith and Daniel B. Wesson, were already working on a prototype for a metallic cartridge revolver. However, they encountered an obstacle when they discovered that Roland White, a former Colt employee, held the patent for a crucial component required for this new invention, the board through cylinder. Undeterred, Smith and Wesson approached White with a proposal. Instead of making White a partner in their venture, they offered him a royalty of 25 cents for every Model 1 revolver they manufactured. This arrangement placed the onus on White to protect his patent in any court cases, a responsibility that would ultimately lead to his financial downfall, but proved highly advantageous for the burgeoning Smith & Wesson Company. The Model 1 underwent several iterations, with the first issue being the first and least common. Approximately 12,000 of these revolvers were produced over a three-year period. Distinguishing features on the first issue included a flared, square-cornered grip, a small round side plate, a round frame profile between the back of the cylinder and the grip, a split articulated hammer, and a flat spring barrel latch. The second issue closely resembled the first issue, but featured several notable differences, such as a larger and irregularly shaped side plate. The frame's profile was flatter, likely a manufacturing efficiency adjustment, and the hammer was just in one piece. The flared square-cornered grip and the octagonal tip-up style frame were retained, making the two issues appear similar at first glance. The third issue represented a substantial redesign of the Model 1, featuring a fluted cylinder, a round barrel, and a rounded bird's head style grip. Different finishes were available, including full nickel plating, full blued steel, and a half plate nickel blue combination. The factory offered two barrel lengths, and variants included changes in the top strap design, transitioning from square to triangular around serial number 9500. During the American Civil War, the Model 1 experienced heightened demand as soldiers on both sides sought these revolvers for self-defense. This surge in popularity strained Smith & Wesson's production capacity, prompting them to expand into a new facility and experiment with a more suitable cartridge design than the 22 short in 1860. Pinkerton detectives, who were also veterans of the Civil War, brought their trusty Model 1s with them to the frontier. Self-defense was the name of the game, and violence was the prize. If Smith & Wesson could get these private eyes through the Great Rebellion, they could certainly survive the open ranges outfitted with outlaws. The Model 1 sequel, called the Smith & Wesson 38 Single Action, or Smith & Wesson Model 2, represents another distinguished advancement in firearm technology during the Old West era. This 38 caliber revolver was manufactured by Smith & Wesson, and came in both single action and double action variations. It marked a pivotal moment as Smith & Wesson's first entry into the 38 caliber category. The revolver featured a five-shot cylinder chambered in 38 SNW, and it was known for its reliability and versatility. The single-action version of the Smith & Wesson Model 2 was introduced in 1876 and remained in production until 1911. During this period, more than 223,000 units were manufactured. In contrast, 
The double action variant was produced in three different iterations between 1880 and 1913, with sales totaling just under 1 million units. The Model 2 was designed to fire black powder cartridges and was characterized by its top rake mechanism. This unique feature allowed the user to release the barrel from the frame by pressing a catch on the top of the frame, positioned just in front of the hammer. The initial iteration of the Model 2, released in 1876, was a single action revolver, which required manual cocking of the hammer before firing. These early models were compatible with black powder cartridges and were offered in both nickel plated and blued finishes. The first version of the 38 single action had a distinctive smooth barrel, devoid of fluting, and a long extractor shroud reminiscent of the Smith & Wesson Model 3 Russian pistol. This design earned it the moniker Baby Russian. Notably, it featured a spur trigger and lacked a trigger guard, and the majority of these revolvers sported 3.5 inch or 4 inch barrels, although some versions with barrels as long as 7 inches were also available. The second model of the 38 single action incorporated a more efficient ejection and extraction system and did away with the shroud seen on the first model. These revolvers also had similarly sized barrels. The third iteration, known as the 1891 model, was in production from 1891 to 1911. It introduced a standard trigger and a trigger guard. It's worth noting that 2,000 of these revolvers were specially manufactured for the Mexican government, featuring a spur trigger and lacking a guard, and earning them the title of the Mexican model. In 1880, Smith & Wesson expanded its offerings by introducing a double action format, the Model 2. This configuration allowed the user to both cock the hammer and fire the weapon with a single squeeze of the trigger. These double action revolvers were distinctive due to their fully enclosed trigger guard. The Model 2 and 38 SNW came in five iterations. The third and fourth versions found favor as police revolvers in cities such as Cleveland, Ohio, Boston, Massachusetts, and Baltimore, Maryland. Additionally, these revolvers were employed by security guards working for the American Express Company and, you guessed it, the Pinkerton National Detective Agency, highlighting the reliability and effectiveness in protecting individuals and property on the western frontier. The utilization of the Winchester Model 1866 rifle, often referred to as the Yellow Boy, played a significant role in the protection systems employed by Pinkerton detectives on the challenging terrain of the western frontier. This iconic firearm, originally designed for the Rimfire 44 Henry cartridge, earned its distinctive nickname due to its receiver crafted from a durable bronze brass alloy known as gunmetal. It stood out for its robust construction and the innovative lever action repeating rifle mechanism that allowed users to fire multiple rounds before needing to reload. The model's design was enhanced by Nelson King's patent, addressing issues found in the earlier Henry rifle by introducing a loading gate on the side of the frame and incorporating a round, sealed magazine partially concealed by a forestock. The significance of the Winchester Model 1866 extended beyond its reputation. Notably, France procured 6,000 Model 1866 rifles, along with an impressive 4.5 million 44 Henry cartridges during the Franco-Prussian War. The Ottoman Empire also acquired a substantial quantity, obtaining 45,000 Model 1866 rifles and 5,000 carbines in 1870 in 1871. The Swiss Army, recognizing the model 1866's prowess, initially selected it as the replacement for their existing single-shot Milbank Amsler rifles. However, due to political pressures favoring domestic designs, they ultimately adopted a bolt-action rifle incorporating a variation of Winchester's tubular magazine. Despite the introduction of more advanced steel frame centerfire models, 
the Model 1866 continued to be manufactured and sold until 1899. This was primarily due to sustained public demand, as these rifles were more affordable compared to their successors. In the rugged and challenging environment of the western frontier, both Henry and Winchester Model 1866 Yellow Boy rifles found a receptive market. These firearms gained legendary status amongst the indigenous population, with Native Americans often referring to them as many shots and spirit guns, reflecting the awe and respect they held for the products of the New Haven-based Winchester Company. Many warriors acquired these rifles, and they were notably used by more than 20 individuals during the fateful encounter between George A. Custer's 7th Cavalry and their single-shot Springfield Carbines at the Battle of the Little Bighorn in June 1876. Winchester repeaters also gained favor among miners, homesteaders, ranchers, law enforcement officers, and even outlaws. The Pinkerton detectives, tasked with tackling gang stick-ups and bounty missions, relied on the Winchester 1866 in their endeavors. When a group of Pinkertons collaborated on an assignment, it was not uncommon to find them riding together, each equipped with more than one yellow boy securely strapped to their mounts. Bandits and bounties were more apt to surrender when a smattering of 66s were shoved in their faces, rather than a ragtag team of pocket revolvers. Finally, the Colt Model 1848 Percussion Army Revolver, a formidable 44 caliber handgun designed by Samuel Colt, is another pivotal production system employed by Pinkerton detectives in the Wild West. This revolver was originally crafted for the U.S. Army's Regiment of Mounted Rifles and was also issued to the Army's Dragoon Regiments. Its creation aimed to resolve the issues encountered with the earlier Colt Walker model. Though introduced after the Mexican-American War, it gained immense popularity among civilians during the 1850s and 1860s and found extensive use in the American Civil War. The Colt Dragoon Revolver underwent several variations in its production, spanning from 1847 to 1860, when it was eventually succeeded by the Colt Model 1860. All the enhancements made to Colt revolvers were also incorporated into the Dragoon series, making it a reliable choice. In total, 19,800 Colt Dragoons were produced between 1847 and 1860, along with an additional 750 Dragoons designed for the British market. The first model Colt Dragoon revolver, part of Colt's second government contract, featured oval cylinder stops a V-type mainspring, a hammer without a rear wheel, and a square back trigger guard. The second model introduced rectangular cylinder notches, and until the 10,000th unit, it retained the V-shaped mainspring. All second model Dragoons shared the square back trigger guard, and around 2,550 of them were produced in 1850 and 1851. The third model Dragoon, numbering 10,000 from 1851 through 1860, boasted various improvements and features compared to its predecessors. Some third model Colt Dragoon revolvers featured frame cuts to accommodate detachable shoulder stocks, horizontal loading lever latches, and folding leaf sights. These versions sported a round trigger guard, and government records indicate an order for around 8,500 Dragoons. Among the other Colt variants, was the 1848 Pocket Pistol, later known as the Baby Dragoon, which found success in California during the Gold Rush era. With the addition of a loading lever, this design evolved into the 1849 Pocket Revolver. The development of the Dragoon was prompted by the issues faced with the Colt Walker revolvers. These issues included the Walker's substantial weight, making it suitable only for saddle-mounted use its tendency for cylinder explosions due to overloading, and its habit of dropping the loading lever after firing, leading to mid-combat malfunctions. 
As the American Civil War approached, Colt Dragoons gained immense popularity. Initially issued to the U.S. Army's mounted rifles and carried in pommel holsters on saddles, these revolvers found favor among civilians in the Southwest, many of whom had served in the Mexican-American War. The Dragoon became a revered and potent weapon of its time. Among the illustrious users of Colt Dragoons were figures like Joaquin Murrieta, the California Bandit, Charlie Parkhurst, a California Teamster and Stagecoach Driver, James Douglas Byrd, Town Marshal of Watsonville, California in 1868, Outlaw Tiburcio Vasquez, and Union General George B. McClellan. In the realm of law enforcement, legendary figures such as Pat Garrett, Wild Bill Hickok, Bat Masterson, John Coffey Hayes, and Ben Daniels, all at some point wielded Colt Dragoons. These revolvers were notably the weapon of choice for Pinkerton operatives traversing the deserts of White Sands during their investigation into the disappearances of Albert Jennings Fountain and his son Henry. The Colt Dragoon Revolver with its rich history and reliability, became an integral component of protection systems utilized by Pinkerton detectives on the challenging and often treacherous Western frontier, just like the other four weapons listed before. Without them, who knows what would have happened to the lawless nature of the Old West. <laughs>